Hi, Jones Bones. It is your girl, Unitedly Random, and I wanted to talk a little bit about my marriage today because I was just having, well, I've been listening to a lot of Jordan uh, Peterson lately, and um, I freaking love, like, I guess intellectuals, people who, like, really critical think, and I was thinking about part of the reason why I think that my marriage is not working. It was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. Um, for those who don't know, me and Stu got together uh, right before COVID, but like we had a toxic startup. I have some videos about that on my channel. You can check them out if you have time. But um, I think it just gives you the gist of things. Um, we had a really rough startup and I was going through a really hard time of my own. I was getting to that point where I'm stretching my wings and ready to fly, fly away from my family. And through knowing Stu, I was able to leave um, that toxicity behind. Like, mind you, even though I love my family, that was my family. I just couldn't continue to be there because of the toxicity. I couldn't continue to be there because it was constantly... <laughs> There's a video premiering on YouTube right now, but I couldn't continue to be there for the toxicity. And he definitely provided me an out. So this love, this respect that I had for him, even though it was more for the situation and I fell in love with his potential. And that's a bullshit reason to fall in love. Let me tell you, don't fall in love with people for their potential because they will hurt you before they reach that point. And like I said, it was a very toxic startup and I've been thinking a lot lately and I'm just like, you know, the way that we see the world is very different and people will always say, oh, it doesn't matter how you see the world, you just stay together. No, it does matter if you want, like, like I'm a very open girl. For my relationship, I want like a partnership and you can't have a partnership in a way with someone who thinks completely different than you because if I always feel like a stranger out in the real world, why would I want to come home and still continue to feel like a stranger? Oh, I saw something come up from this corner. I thought somebody was walking behind me. I was like, oh, oh, uh, got a little nervous. So did I think that our marriage was doomed from the start? I kind of just thought of our marriage as a thing on paper and we were who made our marriage. But I felt like I was asking for so much from Stu. And like, even when we started our relationship, there was so much I needed from Stu that I knew I couldn't get. Part of the reason why we have an open relationship, one, is because I truly believe that you can love two people at the same time. And also, I believe that if you can't get something from one person, you could possibly get it from another person. I don't see the point in depriving yourself of love. If I can't get a, a critical thinker from Stu and sit down and have deep conversations, I can get that from someone else. And because I see myself as this critical thinker or because I enjoy that conversation, that is tied to intimacy with me. Stu was getting intimacy from just protection from knowing me from like you know he got to know my body from knowing me but like further down the line or just just in reality I think for me to grow intimate with someone is through conversation and if Stu couldn't give me that conversation he couldn't give me that what I was asking for if I was going to go out to get it from someone else that could lead to intimacy issues and I don't feel like I never felt like the type of person to lie. So I was always open and honest with Stu about like how I felt about the relationship. And it wasn't like a malice, like you can't give me what I want. I'm going to get it from someone else. But it was like, you can't necessarily give me what I need. So the door has to be open for me to receive it from someone else because this is something I need. And I don't think he quite understood me when I said this was something I need, but Again, if you're always a stranger in the world, if you're always alone in the world, no one understands you in the world, 
When you go home, you don't want to continue to be that person. You want to have a safe space. And it was like my space, my home with Stu was safe because we were separated. You know, he would go to work and then I just have the space to myself. You know, when we come together, it would just be like, oh, like we're spending time together. But still, we have our completely separate things that we take joy from. And I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but that's not necessarily what I want in a relationship. I want to enjoy things together. And we can't we can't and like like i said in the beginning of our relationship we had a very toxic beginning but also Stu was a very toxic man like red flags red flag central was Stu, and even though those were red flags i still pursued him i still went after him he was the only like he had red flags but he wasn't my family red flag so it was just like oh this is better like out of out of the what into the what this is better than my home life right now i feel safer with him than my home and he was still quite toxic and like i remember like people were like mm, him you know like like my friends around me they were like judging they were like hmm Aaliyah? and like in my head i was like i really love him like leave me alone and it was also like there was this part of me where I was going through like a mental breakdown, but there was another part of me that was like, you aren't here to help me. I have to take help wherever I can take help. Where you guys are all around like, mm, him, mm, what? Like you guys are all around and you were like judging me for trying to survive because that's all I was doing. I was just trying to survive. And he was the only one around to help me survive. No one else was around to help me survive. Everyone else had their own things that they were going through. I had to go to Stu. I had to take solace and, and I had to take reprise and I had to, I had to take cover with Stu. It's hard not to grow feelings, grow love, grow an attachment to someone who was protecting you from your biggest demon that you ever fought in your life. It was hard not to fall in love with Stu. It was hard not to look past all of the toxicities because that was the only place I had. It was my only home. It was hard. And on top of that, he was fucking changing. He was growing. You know, it wasn't easy, but like after a while, he started to kind of listen to the things I said. Opposed to other people. I could be honest with him and he could hear it. And a lot of times it would go in one ear and go out the other. But I could be honest to him. There's a lot of people in my life that would judge me for the relationships I have been in and I could never be honest with you. I could try, but all my honesty would just do is hurt you and make me the bad guy. I have to play games. I don't like lying. So out of out of one thing, like like I felt like there was so much judgment for being with Stu. But there was, there was, I could be free. I was free from my family and I could be honest. My words didn't hurt him as much as they could hurt. And also on top of that, like he had hurt me so much that I didn't really care if my words hurted him because it was like, hey, you need to fix this. But it was so frustrating as well to love someone and like fall in love with their future, fall in love with their, their possibilities, but to see them where they're at. It was so hard. I would say, you know, you got to stop doing this. You know, people like people think you're an asshole and he would just brush me off. Like a lot of the things that I would call out or point out to him, he just brush it off. Oh, you're just being sensitive. 
And then later on, like, people would agree with me. The things that I was... People started agreeing with me. And that's what made him change. I was talking to someone the other day, and they said that love makes you change. I think that's the biggest bullshit there is. Love does not make you change. Desire to change makes you change. Love does it like, no, that's bullshit. You love yourself and you still won't go to the gym. You love yourself and you still won't blah, blah, blah. You gotta love yourself more than anybody else in this fucking world. Love doesn't make you change. You make you change. I hate that shit where you get in a relationship, you change. No, bullshit. I think, I think, truly, Stuart does love me. Stuart does love me. But is that enough?